Hi, today I thought I'd start out by showing you guys how I go about generating the G-code files that I use in the CNC machine I have out in the workshop. The software I use is called vCarve Pro. Let's get started by creating a new file. In vCarve you can set up the width, the height, the thickness, and the XY starting position of your work. Once we have our job set up, we're going to use the import bitmap for, for tracing. This just happens to be an image that I pulled down off the web. We're going to start out by resizing this image. We want to resize this down to 5.75 inches. Once we've resized it, the next step we want to do is to trace that bitmap and turn it into vector line art. Once we have the line art, we can go ahead and disable the bitmap layer because we no longer need that. The next thing we'll go about doing is a little bit of cleanup work. I'm going to remove that because it's not going to cut very well. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight all of these individual items and I'm going to group them together for uh, easier manipulation in the future. After that, I'm going to go ahead and center that in the workpiece. And following that, let's put a border around this. Uh, I like to use the uh, rounded corners with a half inch radius. And for this example, I already have inputted six and a half inches by two inches in height. We can go ahead and create that. Once we have that created, I can highlight that and hit F9 again, and it'll center that on the workpiece. The next thing I want to do, because I'm going to cut this sign out, I want to have a little bit of a border here. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the offset tool, and we're going to go ahead and create an offset of about a quarter of an inch. All right, at this point, we essentially have our finished sign ready to go. All we need to do now is set up all of the tool paths and generate our G-code. Let's do that now. The first step in the milling process that we're going to do is we're going to create the field of the sign. To do that, I'm going to select this inner frame and use the pocket tool path. We're going to select our cutting depth and we're going to go with an eighth of an inch. We're going to use an end mill that's a quarter of an inch end mill. We're going to cut that in one pass and we're going to go ahead and say calculate. This now shows us the cutting path that we're going to have. If we wanted to, we could preview this cutting path and we would see, you can see here, we've got a pocket that is an eighth of an inch deep. We can now close the preview screen. Okay, now that we've completed the pocket tool path, and while we still have that quarter inch end mill in our device, we're gonna go ahead and select the outer border and do a profiling tool path. We wanna set our cutting depth to cut all the way through the material, so 0.75. We want to have that same quarter inch end mill. We want to cut on the outside of the line. And so that our piece doesn't fly out, we want to go ahead and add tabs. Tabs are going to be little pieces of wood that we leave behind that will ensure that our piece uh, remains intact to this larger uh, job board uh, that we'll have fastened to the, uh, to the spoil board. So we click Edit Tabs. And you could, add, you could quickly and easily add tabs, and it'll add however many tabs you tell it to add. Or you can actually manually place the tabs if you desire. Now that we have our tabs placed, we can go ahead and close that dialog and calculate that toolpath. Again, we can preview that toolpath, and we will see that that toolpath, in fact, cuts out the part, leaving these little tabs or pockets um, to hold our piece in. We can again close that preview, go back to our design, select now the logo that we want to cut in this sign and in this case we're going to go to the v-carve engraving toolpath and because we cut a pocket here that was an eighth of an inch deep we want to make sure our cutter head starts at that same depth so we're going to set this to 0.125 to equal the depth that we cut out we're going to make sure that we have our 60 degree quarter inch v cutting bit installed select it and now we can calculate that toolpath. After we calculate that toolpath, we'll go ahead and view it. And we can see what our sign should look like. Again, this is a very nice feature of this product, is that you can not only design the sign that you want directly within the product, but you can also create all of the toolpaths as well as visually see the product before you ever step out into the shop. So once we've previewed that, we can go ahead and close it. And we're going to do one more tooling operation on this piece before we're done. While I have that V-carving bit in the machine, I want to select this inner border again. And this time I'm going to tell it Profile Toolpath. 
However, I don't want to cut through the material. I only want to go down most of the way. So we're going to say 0.12. We're going to change from the end mill back to our V-bit. And in this case, we want it to go right on the line and calculate. So now that we've calculated that, let's go ahead and preview it. So that previews, that preview, this preview is showing us what our piece is going to look like. Now that we've got this, the only thing left to do is to generate the G-code. Now how we go about doing that is we do what's called Save Toolpath. So if we click on Save Toolpath, what we can do at this point is we can group our toolpaths into a single file based on the cutter being used, which is why we tried to stick with the same two cutters. So you pick one, you tell it to save the toolpath, you can provide it a name and click Save. Once we've exported the first one, we can then export the second one for the second bit, rather, and we save that toolpath as well. At this point, we can actually go outside to the shop, load the, the G code up on the machine, and cut the part. Okay, you guys might want to know uh, what the files are that we just created. So, this is what those files are going to look like. Well, here's the part that we cut out. Um, I think uh, you could see while it was cutting uh, that it, it, it just cut this too deep. Um, I think uh, doing it over, I, I, I need to change the depth of cut on that. Um, and also, obviously, this is uh, some leftover cedar that we had uh, from some mess-ups of the Boy Scout project back when it was... Uh, before I got my CNC uh, repaired, uh, the controller fixed, and uh, I think y'all, uh, you may have also noticed that as it was doing this profile cut here, uh, the uh, <coughs> sacrificial board that I put underneath uh, didn't quite cover the whole thing, and as it was putting pressure down, it it uh, it let it let up a little bit. I didn't have it clamped down quite good enough, so it kind of uh, raised up and altered the rest of the cut but uh, that's essentially what uh, what we can do with our CNC here that we have we can make any kind of sign uh, just that easy and quick but obviously as you can see um, it takes some practice and some fine-tuning before you actually get to a point where uh, <laughs> you make it right the first time thanks for watching bye